thanks for you know taking the time to have a quick chat. Hey, um, what methods currently are you using uh, in order to generate seller leads? Just you know briefly in thirty seconds. Well, what I do with you is pretty much, yeah, I just put all my eggs in your basket. Um, so we're doing a various uh, variety of lead generation, mainly on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Google Display, and just conversion into digital appraisals. So that's my whole strategy online is to get digital leads um, for people to get a digital appraisal. Yeah. And uh, what that is, as you very well know, is somebody that would like to know what the house is worth without me going to the house or calling them. And that is the biggest uh, um, objection I always have when I used to get leads and then I call them and say, would you like an appraisal? People just say no. So I just figure out I'll get heaps of digital leads requests and I'll do a digital appraisal. And then what I do after is what the, the you know, the main uh, conversion sort of strategy. But to start with is just a simple digital appraisal that you can do in five minutes online. Yes, cool, cool. Yeah, so just going back, 270 leads so far, Diego. So, you know, we're doing well, aren't we? So, yeah, that's right. So, what is, could you walk us through just briefly what is your, the process once you receive uh, a lead, whether it's into your inbox or to um, Facebook, what's the process you take um, following that? Okay, so what we'll do, we basically, as soon as we get a lead, um, there's different ways how, how I get a lead. If it comes through Facebook, normally that's managed by my marketing manager. Um, if it gets through my email address, which normally comes through YouTube or the Google display, then I'll forward it to my marketing manager so that she can start working on their step and processes of, of uh, what we'll do, which I'll talk about to you in a second. But if it comes through me, through my email address, uh, as soon as I send it to Abby, I would send the buyer, sorry, the, the vendor or the, you know, the potential vendor, a text message straight away, which has been saved on my iPhone um, under a, a, you know, a keyword template that says something on the lines. Thank you for requesting a digital appraisal. It will be done with you within the next 24 hours, um, something around those lines, yeah. right? So straight away if it comes to me i'll send him a text message um and then um, um, and then it goes to abby which is my marketing manager and she puts it into the funnel so what we'll do is basically we'll send them an appraisal um which is done on property smart so the appraisal would include um you know anything between five three three four five properties sometime more if there are more but we always we, we will always want a minimum of you know three properties we would never do it for less less than three properties so of course some properties are more generic so we can find 10 15 20 um but and if not we'll have to search a little bit wider and deeper to find some comparables um yeah. then we'll just save the property smart um, appraisal um, which of course got all of our branding and all of that and then once it's saved we'll open it up in um in adobe um uh, pdf or whatever and we add a, a supplement to, um, of marketing information about me which is normally it's got my rate my agents awards it's got some of my testimonials just a, a um and i've pre-saved uh, depending on which suburb i am i've pre-saved some reviews for the suburb so for example if it's from Messi or if it's from Opsonville um, that person is not going to get a generic one they will get um, or they're not the number one agent in Messi for Raid My Agent they will get a bunch of reviews from Raid My Agent from Messi so everything is done in a way that it just looks really really professional of course but it's as well customized to what suburb it is so um, and then it's got some sold pictures with the, the, the vendors but the sold signs it's got some general information about the team and all of that so I attach that to the property smart one becomes a big document which is normally about 30 pages um and uh, we'll email it to the vendor we'll email it to the vendor and we'll send them a text message as well at that point sign um we've emailed you the appraisal uh, let us know if you've got any questions so as yeah. promised no phone calls we don't have to go to the house um occasionally we have to ask a couple of questions if there is no information about the property or like you know if we can see on google map now there are two dwellings on it before there was only one you know we, we're trying to be a little bit smarter before we just put it out we're trying yeah. to do a little bit of research which normally takes a few minutes um so the whole process honestly i don't think it would take more than five minutes for a single lead because uh, we've got it all custom uh, you know but we basically got the system and processes all the templates saved so yes. that's what we do and then from there um it goes into my funnel of uh, communication which we can talk about if you like but basically um i 
I don't really do much with that with that lead. It's not like I'm going to give them a call in a week. Or um, if it comes from Facebook, I will give them message, uh, a video message that says, hi, guys, I hope you received the digital appraisal. Uh, let me know if you got any question. And if you'd like to get something a little bit more specific, I'm more than happy to pop in and have a look at the house. But if not, let's keep in touch and just leave it at that. So if it comes from Facebook, we'll send it a video. And if it doesn't come from Facebook, they're basically, that's it. I don't do anything else with that appraisal directly, but it does get obviously into my uh, lead generation, sorry, my marketing sort of, um, you know, yeah. yeah, that I do after. And how do you, how do you find the response when you do your, say, for example, the, the Facebook video, the week, the quick follow-up? The Facebook video is brilliant. They, they love it. I get a lot of messages back saying, hey, Diego, thank you. We're not looking to sell, but when we do, we definitely will be um, getting in touch. So I get a few of those. Um, yeah, look, I've, I've kind of, I don't really know exactly how many listings I've signed, but this works. And for me, it's about basically putting um, more leads into my uh, database and my two in my lead generation machine. And yeah. as you said, you've, you know, you've provided 260 and um, so, so far it's good. We just add them on and, and uh, I don't care if, you know, like it's, it just goes on there and then I'll just basically push out information to them on a monthly, weekly, daily basis almost. So yeah, yeah. it works. Before we talk about that nurture process, um, we do have some agents who who say, actually, let me backtrack. Diego, you're, just in a couple, a couple of seconds, like how many how many properties are you listing a month, approximately? Um, last Friday, I had nine auctions. And at that point in time, I had 27 auctions running at the same time. And I've never had that many. Um, so I've normally got about 20 auctions running. Um, last month, I sold 30 homes. That uh, was my record month. And I normally list about 30, 20 to 30 a month and then sell an average between 18 to 25 a month. So yeah, we'll, we'll do quite a bit of turnover. Great turnover. Yeah. And I just wanted to highlight that because Obviously, yeah, you're listing and selling a lot of properties per month. However, you still manage to deliver on your promise, on your leads. So some people are saying to me, um, Diego, hey, Ben, I'm just too busy at the moment to generate leads. I'll, I'll come back to you later when I'm, I'm more, you know, I've got, I've got more time. What would you say, what advice would you give to someone who, who's, who's kind of turning down any leads at this point in time and waiting till they're a little bit less free? Well, you take the risk of doing the classic uh, busy, not busy, busy, not busy, busy, not busy real estate that everybody sort of goes through if you don't nurture the lead generation. Um, I'm always going up. I'm always, you know, year on year, I'm always busier than the year before and there is no downtime. And that's because we put the time and energy into it. And to be honest, if, if you if you systemize what we're discussing now, it yeah. doesn't take too much time. And, you know, obviously we can talk about this for hours, but if you're yeah. too busy, well, that means you probably need some help in the form of an assistant, a marketing manager or an agent that can help you with it. Because there is, there shouldn't be never that big. You should, should, ne you should never be too busy to do something that is called, that is um, getting more leads and more listings. If you're too busy, you're not doing it right, I think. Yes, right. Okay, yeah, Put, putting systems in place to just be more efficient with your time. And that's probably why we're on this. That's why probably you have time for this call today, right? And just another thing is that to anyone listening, when Diego and I work together, Diego gets back to me. He's a bit, probably one of the busiest agents we work with and he gets back to me the fastest in terms of, you know, videos. Uh, you're producing monthly market report videos. You know, you're getting back to getting back to me very fast. It just comes down to time management. Would that be fair? Like, how, how do you manage to handle all your workload but still be so um, quick in terms of responding and getting things done? Well, you've got to have the same standard with everything you do because if you say, well, I'll get back to a vendor quickly but not to a buyer or to a supplier or, you know, to a partner like yourself or whatever, then 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 your reputation is not aligned. So your audio doesn't match, match the video. That's what Tom Penners always say. So you, know, you just got to do the same for everyone. It doesn't matter if it's a buyer that you don't really want to, you know, work with because you're too busy or if it is, a, you've kind of got to give them the impression that, you, you know, a meaningful impression as well, that, hey, even if you can't help, you're still going to be telling them, hey, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, maybe someone else that can help you. What, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. You just got to be on top of it. Otherwise, otherwise you become sloppy and next thing you know, it's um, people think that you're not actually delivering because if they think that you're not good, doing something right, they think every, everything else is not right as well. So it's yeah. got to be on top of it. And, you know, to reply to an email or, and again, if you're too busy to reply to emails, literally too busy, that's, again, you're doing it wrong, you know, get some help. 
get a get a PA, get a get a whatever. Um, it shouldn't be you shouldn't be too busy because if someone like myself can manage to, you know, um, yeah. find the time to do stuff like this, why not? You know, yeah, yeah, totally. I know what you mean. So now I'd like to talk about the nurture process, right? Because obviously most leads you get aren't going to go. Yep, let's 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 right now, then and now, right? That's obviously ideal scenario but in reality it doesn't happen so once you've gone through the process of your follow-up process and they still know say you know sorry not quite interested right now Diego what are the next step what system do you have in place in order to nurture your database and, and keep in touch with those people yeah well you, you okay so you've got the, the name you've got the email address you've got the phone number you've got the address and you can find out when they purchase the property now all of a sudden um you know that, that there it is it's, it's there's no magic bullet here but you know um send them a letter once a month you know a general mail out it doesn't matter just send them something that they can open in the letterbox and they can see your name on it bang that's one point of contact send them an email it might be through um your whatever crm system you have or i send them or well, my pa would send them a individual email from my email address which would have high and low sales uh, record sale whatever that might be but it's addressed to the person so it's addressed for example to ben talking about something specific to you to where you live they can't unsubscribe to that and yes it takes time i've got a thousand plus so I'd take my pa a day and a half not the best job in the world to have for that day and a half but you know that's that's what they paid for so there you go second point of contact now um you got the mobile number so you might not want to call them at the start because they might get pissed off but you might want to send them a text message that says, hi, Ben, I know you're not looking to sell, but check out this property it sold last week for this much. Um, it's not far away from your house. Again, if you're starting and you only got 100 leads, this, this kind of stuff doesn't take long. But all of a sudden, they got an email, they got an email, they got a, uh, a text message, they got a letter in the letterbox. And then with all of this, you can, you know, target Facebook and Google because you got email addresses and phone number. And that's something you do for me, uh, which I'm grateful. Um, so all of a sudden they see your name on Facebook and Google. And then on the anniversary, we'll just drop them off a bottle or something. And with a little, um, you know, thank you card and say, congratulations, another year out of the house. Hope you're well, Diego, or whatever. Uh, yeah. So you see, it's it's actually, yeah, it's, but you got to do it and you got to systemize it so that it, it's every month is going to be done because you see, I'll give you five points of contact. You can actually do more, but these are five ways that people would see my name on a monthly basis and there's a thousand of them. So it's uh, that's why you get saturation and you sort of get market recognition. So people people know your name, they know you who you are because they see your name over and over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. And so how do you know? And I think a, a question I have and probably a question other agents listening will have would be, so you said you, you send them a text message if there's a sale in their area um, or that's mm. relevant to them. How do, you, how do you sort and structure your database so you can actually know, oh, right, okay, I sold a property there. Now I'm going to give Ben a text message because it's relevant to him. Like how do you even manage that? It seems? Well, in that in that sense of you know the the database, I use a, a Google spreadsheet, so that's my database. I don't use anything else but that. But you've got a suburb, so then you can uh, um, you know uh, that when when my PA does the email, she would uh, categorize into suburbs, and let's say you got ten different suburbs, and then you basically just look for a pro the highest sale, for example, in 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 that particular suburb, and when you send the letter to Ben, for example, or their email to Ben, I would say, hey, this is the highest selling our suburb. And you got another 15 of them in the same suburb. So all you need to do is change the name. So, you know, it's, it's, um, but you got the template and you're going to copy paste that. All you need to do is change the name. And for a different suburb, you change the property that you're talking about. So that kind of stuff, I don't even do it anymore. It's, it's, um, my PA does it all. They know what I tell them what to do and they'll find whatever property or whatever the highest and lowest sale or whatever the five highest sale of last month yeah. so they will look for all of them i'll just say okay this month we're doing this they take care of the rest so this is a system process yeah. of course you still got to do it and if you don't have a pa you'll do it yourself but hey if you you know everyone starts with one lead 10 lead 20 you know until when i was i had 100 150 leads i was doing everything myself i only started getting a pa a few years back when i had about 150 people in my leads generation system and now i've got a thousand i wish i started doing what I've, i'm doing with you earlier because i probably have two thousand but it is what it is yeah you are where you are and you can only uh, change where you're going to be tomorrow not where you've come from so 
Have you got any examples of someone, you know, can you think of an example of, you know, someone who came into your system, you know, maybe when we first started working together, who now has listed and sold with you, but it's taken a bit of a process? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. And like, I've, I've got a call from a lady before. She, um, her name Natalie, down in Ranoi. And now obviously um, every single phone number that is saved, um, that my PAs or my marketing manager saves, it goes with the name, the address and, um, you know, of, of where they are. So she called me and I said, hey, Natalie, how are you doing? She's like, oh, hi, what? what? She's like very surprised. I was like, yeah, yeah, well, you, I did a digital appraisal for you in, in um, a while back. And she's like, yeah yeah well obviously i just saved i know i'd never been to the property because i couldn't i didn't know who she was but because it was saved on my phone and all of my leads they got xxx and that so when i get a call from one of them and i don't know i know i put one on one together so anyway she just wanted to get a, a in-person appraisal and i've made the time for tomorrow so it's um you know, she's, she's got my coffee card I sent last month. Last month, I sent a $5 spreadsheet to my old database, cost me five grand, you know, like, but it's, it's yeah. so when, when I spoken to her, she's like, oh, I still got my co your free coffee card on the fridge. I, I got a scratch, I didn't win anything. Um, but yeah, I'd like for you to come and have a look at the house and to get something more accurate. Whatever I put in the digital appraisal, it doesn't matter. They know, because when I send them an email, they, I, I tell them this is just generic, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. it's, um, you look, yeah, I've got plenty that I've sold properties for, but this is the most recent one. She literally called me about half an hour before I spoke to you. Yeah, that's a great example. It's a great example. So do you ever follow up with a phone call at all or at some point in the future? Do you ever, do you ever no. call your database? Oh, look, I, uh, the way that I've set up my business, I hate getting on the phone. So yeah. I, I, I only call my hot leads and I categorize my database into digital soon or hot. So I only call the hot one because those are people that will come on the market in the next, you know, 30 days or something like that. And, um, and I start, sometimes struggle to call them. And um, so I wouldn't call the other ones. I just don't have the time to do that. So no, I don't. Plus, especially with the digital leads, I tell them that I won't text, I won't call and I won't go to the house. Yeah, um, and that's part of the marketing that me and you do, so they feel safer to yes. engage with me. So I never call them, no. Yes. But that's just me. That's just the way that I got to set up. I don't have the time to get on the phone. I know it's uh, everybody got a different business set up. I, I do it in a certain way that I don't have to spend an hour or two hours a day on the phone. It's not right or wrong. It's just the way that I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Diego, thanks for telling us about your or sharing your follow up process and your nurture process. Um, I'm sure a lot of people got a lot of value out of that, and maybe take some nuggets of information, might be able to apply that to their own business wherever they are around New Zealand and Australia. Um, one, other, one other thing, um, everyone should check out Diego Triglia, um, his Facebook page. You'll notice straight away that um, Diego spends a lot of time uh, invested and money invested in his social media. And I just wanted to ask um, Diego, you know, are you seeing kind of a, do you feel like you're getting a return on all this activity uh, and time you're investing into your social media? Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, I, I, you can't, uh, you can localize it. I, I, I don't know. I've got to the point where I can't localize what's working and what's not working, but I know that people see my name and, you know, I'm busier than I ever been. And yeah. every month is, you know, not all, not every month, but most months are record months. So, um, you know, that's I think good. I had seven record months last last year or over the, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's what's you know, and and I I uh, a part of a billboard that I've got and and you know twenty thirty thousand um flies that go out out every month. Everything else is digital, so yeah, it definitely works. But you know, you kind of got to do it and keep doing it and 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 uh, spend some money towards that. You know, so I don't know how much we spend, but maybe four five grand a month all up on digital. But you know, we will get hundreds of thousands of people viewing the whatever videos that we put out, market updates, and all of that. So yeah, I, I do get the the, the are people stopping at the you know, go to the supermarket. But when I'm out and about shopping and they say, "Oh, watch your video," I'm like, "Okay, it's good. It's working." So okay. yeah, it definitely works, but you kind of got to do it not in isolation. You just got to do the old thing, the old shaban. Yeah, yeah. And just keep doing it and keep investing time and energy in it. It will pay off, but it's hard to say what exactly works. Um, it's a combination. Well, I tell you, Diego, um, I don't know if I've shared this with you, but we're building a, such a, a large retargeting audience, like your virtual audience. Um, through, so through all that content that you're creating, you're just the content you're creating, we're able to retarget, obviously, you know, your more lead gen type ads and what we found is that 
your lowest cost per lead are the people who have engaged or have seen your content in the past. So, you know, because mm -hmm. of that, all that work <laughs> you're doing, you're getting a lower cost per lead when you retarget them. So that's, an, that's another great, you know, advantage of building other content other than just lead gen ads over and over again. That's right. That's right. Diego, thanks. Cool. Appreciate that. Thanks, Ben. Much appreciate it. So talk soon, eh?